I would wake up every day and realize that this was my life. And there was nothing I could do to change it. Regardless how good I walk or able-bodied I'm trying to be, I, I'm, I'm going to be disabled for the rest of my life. Listen, I look different, but I promise you I can do the things you can do. I'm handicapable, not handicapped. When the doctors, you know, were like, were delivering me or whatever, they said, my mom said that uh, when the doctors, you know, pulled me out, they, uh, they, they all just like stood around me like in a circle and they just all like froze and like were all in shock or whatever and like didn't say anything for a long time. And my mom said she just freaked out because she thought I was like dead or something else. Something was like really, really wrong with me. And then finally the doctor said, ma'am, uh, we, we saw we didn't know, we, didn't, we couldn't tell like from the pictures or whatever, but your son only has one arm. <laughs> my mom said that she like flipped out on those doctors. She's like, I don't care, just give me my baby. So that's like, this is, I, this is one of the pictures like right after, I guess. I'm Jacob Tobias and I was born without my left hand. It was like I was really little and like I saw a lot of people doing the monkey bars. Like that's, this is when that urge started. I saw a lot of people doing the monkey bars and I tried it and I immediately fell, immediately fell off the monkey bars. And from then on out, like I came home, I remember saying like, man, if, only, like if I had two hands, I, I, I could do easily what they're doing. Ever since then, I was like, what, what was I thinking? No, like this is, this is how it's supposed to be. Like I'm happy where I'm at. This is, I, this is perfect. Like what I have right now, absolutely love it. I love everything I have, every opportunity I get. Cause every day I go out and it's like, I get to tackle a new challenge that other people take for granted. And I feel like, I don't know how y'all two-hand people do it. Like, I feel like life would get boring. You know, I have one hand, it's like tying my shoes. Okay, this is cool. Let's see how fast I can tie my shoes today. Or, you know, let's, let's go play some football and make just a simple catch that everybody else can make. When I make it, I'm like, whoa, that was cool. So I take that very, you know, seriously. Like, everything I do is just, it's, it's fun. You know, it's, life never gets boring with it. So I'm very, very happy with it, you know. I'm going to be disabled for the rest of my life. Uh, and that part was definitely hard to take in, hard to accept, just because I was 22 years old, you know, able body, nothing wrong, and just because of an accident, you know, boom, and everything has to change. So that was definitely the rock bottom of my life. I'm Jen Lee, and I'm an amputee. Throughout my military career, I kind of picked up a, uh, my favorite hobbies. One of my favorite hobbies is riding motorcycle. So uh, me and my four other employees at that time uh, we were riding motorcycles so we decided to ride motorcycles down to Jacksonville Florida and but then however coming back up uh, to get back to Savannah Georgia uh, I got in a motorcycle accident I was hit from a car hit by a car and that's uh, resulted of my open fracture of my left leg and about a month later I was an amputee so the transition from that the, the army wasn't sure whether they can cap me or not so I had to prove to them that I was still able to serve my country and still be able to become a soldier. So I was able to do that for additional three years after I got hurt. They're gonna amputate a couple toes or now it's gonna be two feet. And I was saying that I was really optimistic and I didn't care and I just wanted it to happen. You know, during that time it was all like these like rumors and no one really knew. And, but when they did know, and they were telling me that they were going to amputate. It was very hard. Um, you know, what can you do? Lemons and lemonade. <laughs> I am Jamie Shambaum, and I am a meningitis survivor. Really hard. I'm just tired of being here, and I wish I was there. I wish I was in school. I was just, you know, enjoying myself, and then all of a sudden I didn't really feel well, and I asked to take a nap, which is kind of weird when you're at your friend's house. So I did, and then the next morning got a lot worse. Throughout the night, I was vomiting and had a lot of nausea. I noticed that my hands were sensitive, and so were my feet, to like the tile floor that was cold, or like the flushing the toilet, like the porcelain, or washing my hands afterwards. And then it got progressively worse. I stopped going to the kitchen fridge because the kitchen sink was a lot closer to get water. I stopped going to the kitchen sink and started going to the bathroom sink because the water was a lot closer. So each step was slowing down. And luckily my sister called and was like, hey, do you need a ride to school? Because she also went to UT. 
And I said, no, I think I need to go to the hospital. And by the time I got to the hospital, I couldn't walk anymore and didn't realize it, but that was the last time I was walking with my legs. Gyrus generally affects the brain. In her case, it, she was septic. It's called men meningococcal septicemia. So her blood turned toxic. Jamie's hands, legs, and feet turned black as her body went into full battle mode to survive. I ended up not having my amputations until a couple months into my hospital stay. So I was kind of watching my limbs be half alive, half dead for three months. It smelled <laughs> like someone died. Yeah, I hope no one goes through that. <laughs> And then the crazy thing is to go through all of that and learn that it could have been prevented through a vaccine is something else that I have to process too. young age, I've always been asked, you know, how is that possible? Why do you do these things? So baseball is like my, that's my, that's my thing. Every time I go out on the baseball field, you know, people always, always are always like, ah, that's awesome. You know, that's really cool what you've been able to do, you know, just because they don't understand how it's possible. You know, that's the cool part of it. You know, it, it doesn't really seem possible, like how you can take, catch a ball, take the glove off, throw it and put the glove back on. But the way I do it, just, I do it just as fast, if not faster than most kids with two hands, you know. And then batting, people are always like, how is that possible? You have one arm, how do you, how do you hit? And I was just like, it's normal. It's just what anybody else says, just a lot of practice. You know, I'm just that guy who, who finds a way to help out his team, you know, in the best way possible. Just the little hits or a good shot in the outfield, you know. The Texas High School Baseball Coaches Association has invited some of the state's top baseball players for the 42nd annual THS BCA All-Star Game. This year, there was a noticeable difference in the outfield as Van High School senior Jacob Tobias suited up for the North squad and had an all-star performance going two for two with a stolen base, a run scored, not to mention several amazing catches in center field. All this despite being born without a left hand on his partial left arm. A lot of people showed up to that game and I just got to prove, you know, look, I have one arm, but I promise you I can do it too. I got uh, MVP for the North team. It was it was a good game, luckily. Like, luckily I actually performed really well. First kid I went up against was a UT pitcher. And so that really, like, solidified my idea, you know, if I, that's a college pitcher, I just got to hit, hit against and I have one arm. If that doesn't prove that I can play or like that I'm no different, I don't know what does. So that's also been like that a catalyst to get me to, you know, maybe pursue baseball, I guess, an option in college. Hello. Hello. Welcome. How are you? Good. In the beginning, when I was looking into the mirror, I wasn't ready. I had no, I didn't have any in my hair. I lost most of my body and I was frail and gauntly and malnourished. I didn't recognize myself, I guess. But, I mean, it eventually changed. Once my hair grew back, it surprisingly boosted my confidence kind of quickly, even though I was still in a wheelchair. Uh, but, you know, over time I looked in the mirror and thought, I looked good. <laughs> I know that's small, but it was huge to me just to know that I could have confidence in myself. Not like I doubted that all IPTs felt like that, but they weren't valued or like beautiful because everyone's beautiful in their own ways. I just had to see myself grow on my own terms, I guess. And it didn't take that long, <laughs> which is good. It's just such a frustrating process. I'm sure as you have heard and figured out the trial and error of figuring out your socks. I remember when they put my prosthetic on for the very first time and I wasn't even standing, they just put it on me. And they were like, how does that feel? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have nothing to compare this to. <laughs> this is a very new experience. Like, I 
can't tell you how this feels because I don't really know how it's supposed to feel. <laughs> but, I mean, maybe too loud. It can be frustrating. Voila. It's funny, I do remember before being sick and I saw this guy, he didn't have a prosthetic on, so he was on crutches. And I remember like not really staring at him, but I remember seeing him and driving away and just being like, that sucks. You know, like just having to deal with that. And then suddenly it happened to me. <laughs> I got the double whammy. You know, with my hands, you kind of just figure out what works best for you over time. It's very frustrating because you, I think a lot of people want to be stubborn and not want to change how they do things, but then you learn how it can be a lot easier. It just might not be how it was, but it's how it needs to be, unfortunately. And to be completely honest, I'm not easy with change. And this could have been a bigger definition of change. <laughs> how do you wake up Lady Gaga? I don't know. You poke your face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
I have another shot at this, another shot for 2018. Originally called the Jamie Shambaum Act, and it was for all college students living on public and private facilities to get the vaccines. Honestly, when it came to the bill, it was just something that needed to be done because, again, no one used to go through what I did, and I didn't know what meningitis was, and if there's a law that makes you, you know, educate yourself and get vaccinated, then that's just what needs to be done because no one needs to go through what I did, and since the law has been passed, about 350,000 students each year in the state of Texas are getting vaccinated. And since 2011, which is when it was passed, uh, vaccine rates have gone up by 50%. So that's awesome. I feel very happy to know that I was directly involved with that. So, yeah, meningitis is a, has, is a really fast-killing disease. And I couldn't even enjoy a full semester before I got sick. If you're going into the hospital and they're telling you you have meningitis, you're in a scenario where you are literally fighting for your life. That's why Jamie and I are joining teens to raise our voices for meningitis prevention. I want to make sure everyone knows what I know now. My story is not only r real, but there's a huge purpose behind it. No one needs to go through what I did if, I mean, I took one for the team. Hopefully people will be listening and get vaccinated and, you know, be proactive in that sense. So. I would say it's just really motivating for me because I just want to do what I can to protect people. Life is never going to go as planned. Really, it's not uh, just not doing it for me. I just want to do this for my mom as well to kind of just, you know, bring this medal back just to, you know, hopefully help have her and say, hey, you know, I was able to do it again, you know, with your help, with your motivation as well upstairs, you know. You have to decide when you're bumped off course if it's going to hold you back I have a potential tryout over the summer for the UT baseball team. It's been awesome, you know. A lot of people are finally realizing that I, I, I can play, you know, so that's been really cool. We'll move you forward. That's the spirit we celebrate today. That's something that all of you at some stages in your life uh, have understood or, or will understand. My goal, I would say, for next year is to amend the law. Recently, there's been outbreaks. Um, of meningitis on different college campuses with that one strain that is not protected. So up until recently, they, have this, they made this vaccine, and so now there are two vaccines that you can get to be completely protected against the five main serogroups. So right now, my law does not include that, so I'm going to make sure that next year we testify during legislation and make sure that we can amend it so that every college student can get both vaccines because it would be really hard for me if there was an outbreak of meningitis B. I would feel slightly responsible. I really would. And so while that is my immediate goal, I mean, my dream is for everyone in the state or in the country to be following and having laws for all college students to get vaccinated. So there's a long road ahead of me know the people who may have disabilities or whatever, I promise you they're, they're, they're pretty special. That's what I would say, I guess.